Now, let us do this with a numerical example. I have a 7 milliamp current source, a 2 kilo ohm resistor here, a 1 kilo ohm resistor there, a 4 kilo ohm resistor over there and a 14 milliamp current source over there. Okay. Now, this is a very simple circuit. You do not need to necessarily go through nodal analysis to find the solution to this. In fact, you can try superposition because it has two sources. I do strongly encourage you to do that and when you solve it in uh, let us say two or three different ways and find the same uh, solution, you will have a lot of confidence in the answers. Okay. But we will go through nodal analysis because that is what we are trying to learn at this point. So, first of all, for nodal analysis, it is more convenient to take the conductance values than resistance values. So, this 1 kilo ohm resistor here, this is 1, 1 kilo ohm resistor corresponds to a conductance of 1 milli siemens, okay. and this 2 kilo ohm resistor is half a milli siemens or 1 by 2 milli siemens and this 4 kilo ohm is 0.25 milli siemens or 1 fourth of a milli siemens. Okay. Now, we need to set up nodal analysis equations and let us choose this node to be the reference node Okay, and I will solve for these voltages V 1 and V 2 at nodes 1 and 2 with respect to the reference node. Okay. So, what is my set of uh, nodal equations? I have the G matrix, which will be a 2 by 2 matrix in this case. I have two variables V 1 and V 2 and that will be equal to the vector of independent current sources pushing current into nodes 1 and 2. Okay. So, first of all, what is this entry? The very first entry here, that is the sum of conductances at node 1, which is 1 milli siemens plus half a milli siemens, which corresponds to 1.5 milli siemens. And this one, which corresponds to the conductance between node 1 and 2 is minus 1 milli siemens. Similarly, this one, which is also the conductance between nodes 1 and 2 is minus 1 milli siemens. We knew anyway it had to be like this, because we know that the conductance matrix is symmetrical. And finally, the last one is the sum of conductances at node 2, which is 1 milli siemens plus 0.25 milli siemens, which is 1.25 milli siemens. Okay. And on the right side, we have the vector of currents being pushed into nodes 1 and 2. What is being pushed into node 1 is minus 7 milli ampere, because 7 milli ampere is being drawn out of it. So, this is minus 7 milli ampere and what is being pushed into node 2 is plus 14 milli ampere. Okay. And we have to solve this. right? Now, let me rewrite these uh, uh, fractional entries in a different form, so that it is easier to calculate the inverse. This can be written as 3 by 2 milli siemens minus 1 milli siemens minus 1 milli siemens and plus 5 by 4 milli siemens. This is not strictly necessary. Okay, You can of course, work with uh, decimal numbers, but here I am trying to do it without having to use calculators and so on. I will put it down this way. Minus seven and plus fourteen milliamps. Okay. So this is G, and this is V, and this is I. Okay. So now I have to invert this, and that's quite easy. I'm assuming you know how to do this. 
in another lesson i'll discuss matrix inversion briefly but for now i'll assume you know how to do this so the inverse of this will be 1 over the determinant of this matrix and for inverting a 2 by 2 matrix we do this okay and the unit of this of course will be kilo ohms that is i have not put any units over here but the units of all the numbers will be kilo ohms that's why i put kilo ohm outside okay that's because the unit of each of these entries is milli siemens the inverse of that is kilo ohms okay or you can put it inside as well the unit of the determinant will be milli siemens square and the unit of each of these will be milli siemens and milli siemens divided by milli siemens square will give you kilo ohm okay and if you expand this uh, whole thing you will get 1 by 7 times 10 8 8 12 12 kilo ohms okay so this is the inverse of the g matrix now the unknown vector v1 v2 is the inverse of the g matrix times the current vector minus 7 milliamp 14 milliamp okay and this you can easily see is six volts and sixteen volts okay so the two node voltages turn out to be six volts and sixteen volts like i said you can uh, do it by an independent method such as superposition and verify that this is indeed the case okay So now we have set up the nodal analysis equations and solved for the unknown vector of node voltages. The rest of it is pretty simple, and usually in uh, assignment problems and so on, you will not be asked to calculate every branch voltage and every branch current, but some specific ones which you can calculate using the voltages V1 and V2, which you already solved for. Okay. So what I now have is that. This is six volts with respect to the reference node, which means that this voltage is six volts, and similarly, this voltage is sixteen volts. Now, it's quite common in circuits to point to one node and say the voltage at that node is uh, something. Let's say six volts. In those cases, it's understood that the other node is some implicit reference node. Usually, the reference node chosen for nodal analysis or what is indicated as ground in the circuit. Okay. a voltage is always measured between two points so you have to be very clear about what the two points are when you specify a voltage okay now the rest of it is very simple the current source currents we already know and the current through this resistor will be 3 milliampere the current through that one will be 16 by 4 which is 4 milliampere and the current going in that way will be 10 milliampere okay and you can quickly check kirchhoff's current law at each node and it will be valid 14 milliamps is being driven from here 4 goes this way and 10 goes that way and out of that 3 goes this way and 7 goes that way okay so this way you can solve for any variable you want in the circuit using nodal analysis okay